Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to meet you through video. My name is Hong Bo Zhang. I'm a assistant professor in Obo Academic University, and I'm also a visiting scholar in Harvard University. My research focus is nanotechnology and microphysics for biomedical applications. As many of you already know, the current drug discovery and development process has many challenges. To develop a single drug, it may need more than 10 years' time and more than 1 billion euros. This is a heavy burden and high risk for pharmaceutical companies, and the end product will be very expensive. To support the drug discovery and development process, scientists from different fields have contributed in different ways. F for people from computational science, they try to use computational tools to develop the docking and other methods to test which candidate drug might be useful for a certain disease. And people from biology, they also use protein, DNA, and microRNA as candidate drugs. And focus on nanomaterial and technology. We develop a different nanoparticles, for example, liposomes, porous material, composite, and also DNA nanotechnology. We also use different devices, for example, the microphysics and 3D printing. In the end, we collaborate with people from biology to test the system with different in vivo models. What is the major problem for the current drug delivery? Is targeting and control release. Because for current drugs, the major difficulties is they, they might have very strong side effect because the drug is di distributed to the whole body. And to control the drug release will greatly enhance the drug therapeutic effect and reduce the drug side effect. Another important issue is personalized medication. There are huge personal differences in the genomics and metabolism profile. To use uh, one drug and one dose to different patients will end up in low therapeutic efficiency and cause serious side effect for some patients. Every year, many patients die from adverse drug effect. To improve the drug e efficiency, we should develop tools to reach personalized medication. This can be done by first screening the genomic profile of a certain person, do some diagnostics, and then give the right drug and right dose to this candidate. We work on nanotechnology. We have been developing different nanoparticles for biomedical and pharmaceutical applications. One interesting material we are working with is DNA nanomaterial. We can build up the D DNA nanoparticles using different DNA sequence. And we have been using those nanomaterial to cure different disease.
the major uses are in cancer therapy. But we also do wood healing and bacteria combating. For diabetes patients, the wood is very difficult to recover. The reason is because high glucose level will inhibit the expression of HIF1 alpha. To, to promote the diabetes patients with healing, we had developed a special electro spring nanofibrous scaffold for wood healing. We have also cross-link a special drug called DFO to the scaffold. And this drug can block the pathway of high glucose induced HIF1 alpha inhibition. In this case, we can promote the wood healing by building up the 3D scaffold and also by blocking the inhibition of HIF1 alpha. Here is the nanofibrous scaffold we developed. As a result, by using the special nano scaffold and also by loading DFO, we can clearly see the HIF1 alpha expression is improved. This also leads to the high expression of VEGF growth factor, which can which are very important for wood healing. As you can see from the in vivo study, with PCD, the one containing the drug, we can really promote wood healing precise. Another example is spinal cord regeneration. Currently, there are no good solution for spinal cord regeneration. So it had been attracted a lot of research interest in this field. In this study, we have de developed a thermal responsive polymer by, by mixing up two polymers. By mixing this POL1 and PLL2 at certain ratio and certain concentration, we can achieve a thermal responsive at 37 degree. When we heat up the solution of hydrogel to 37 degree, it will become solid from liquid form. Then we had been loaded drug inside this hydrogel, and then we gave it to the injury part. This is very easy to handle because in which for in room temperature the hydrogel is in liquid form. After injection, it will become solid and then keep the drug there. As you can see from our in vivo result, we have been promoting and reducing the cell deaths by using this system. Microfluidics is very important technology for biomedical application. By playing different liquids inside microchannels, we can very precisely control the droplet formation, and we can use it for different pharmaceutical and biological applications. For example, we can encapsulate single cells in microfluidics and do very high throughput screening. We can also create new functional materials using microfluidic 
devices. Here is the microfluidic droplets we produced. By adjusting different parameters, we can produce monodispersed droplets. We can also control the size of the inner droplet and outer droplets. One important application of microfluidics is single cell diagnostics and sorting. For the traditional way of high throughput screening, people are using 96 well plate or 384 plates. This is very good for small sample size. However, if in the case you need to screen 1 million samples, you use 96 well plate, one person have to work day and night for two years. With microfluidics, we can create the droplets as a microreactor, and we can do the reaction inside the droplets. In such a way, we are reducing the reaction region by 1,000 to 1 million times. We can also generate 1 million droplets in 6 hour time to achieve super high resolution screening. This is how we do the screening at protein level. There are two types of cells. One can produce a special protein and the other don't express the protein. By encapsulating the two cells inside the droplets, we can separate them. We can co-encapsulate the cells with detection antibody. Then we incubate off-chip for 15 minutes. For the cell which express the protein, it can be detected by the antibody bead. And this will show a fluorescent signal. Then we go through another microfluidic device. It have a laser induced gating system. When the laser detect a fluorescent signal, it will open the gate and the droplet will go to one channel. When there is no signal, it will go to the waste channel. In this case, we can separate the protein expression cell and non-producer. We can also work at genomic level. We create the barcoding bead with a special sequence and continue with a poly T sequence. Different bead have a different barcoding sequence to identify different cells. Then we co-encapsulate, we co-encapsulate the cell and the bead inside the droplets. We also inject the cell lysis buffer inside the droplet, then the cell will be lysed. When the mRNA release from the cell, the barcoding bead will collide, collect the information from the cell, and the mRNA will bend to the bead because it have a poly A sequence. Then we lysis all the droplets and we do a sequencing. From the sequencing result, you will see there is a barcoding sequence linked with a special gene. By arranging the same barcoding with different genes, we will know those genes are from cell 1. And by 
taking another barcode with different genes, we will know this is from cell 2. In such a way, we will get single cell level gene sequencing. With macrophytics, we can also do super high resolution diagnostic in combination with DNA nanotechnology. By putting the DNA by putting a probe on top of a special shaped DNA nanostructure, we can guarantee the probe is always facing upwards. This will be very sensitive for the probe comparing to the probe randomly oriented in the solution. Then we can put the DNA probe inside the glass capillary. Then we flow the liquid through the capillary. As you can see from this study, we can simultaneously detection different stuff using one capillary. And the detection sensitivity is much more sensitive than the traditional method. Using the same theory, we can also detect heavy metal ions in wastewater. Microfluidics are also very useful for microparticle fabrication. In this case, we are developing a colon targeted drug delivery system. We first use a parasitical nanoparticle to load the drug. And we also modify the surface to have mucose adhesive property. Then we encapsulate the nanoparticles into pH responsive polymer with macrophytics. The pH responsive polymer only dissolves in colonic pH and it can deliver the nanoparticle into colon, then the nanoparticle will adhere to the mucose of colon and release the drug. In such a way, we can achieve colon targeted drug delivery. We can also build up more complicated system with macrophytics. For example, in this study. We can also do nano encapsulation. In this case, we have porous silicon nanoparticle. We can load the drug inside. Then we encapsulate the particle into a pH res responsive polymer, acetylate dextrin. And then we conjugate CPP to the surface. The pH responsive polymer only dissolves in acidic pH. Upon cellular uptake, this will be dissolved and the porous material will be exposed and drug will release. Here, I want to acknowledge my main collaborators, Professor David Weiss from Harvard Uni University, Professor Harold Sandos from University of Helsinki, and Professor Molly Steven from Imperial College London. I also want to thank my collaborators in Helsinki, in Harvard University, in Turku, and in China and also the funding support. Since I just recently established my research group in this September, I'm also looking for motivated candidate to join my group as PhD student. If someone is interested, welcome to send me email. Thank you for your attention.